So in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to take a drawing from your sketchbook and convert it into a uh, more highly realized sketch um, for concept art, for uh, something that uh, you might want to show to a client. Anyway, the first thing we're going to do is open up Photoshop and I'm going to be going into a folder that I already have selected here. It's uh, called Character Design from Scans and what they are is a bunch of pages that I scanned from one of my sketchbooks. Uh, we're going to select this drawing here. It's called uh, CA08. CA is for concept art and what we have here is a very um, simple drawing of a uh, character and what I'm going to be doing is showing you in a, a few short steps how we can take this sketch and convert it to something that um, you might want to show to a client if you're working on um, uh, game design or uh, some animation concepts or uh, book concepts or whatever. Anyway, so we have our um, drawing open. I'm just going to enlarge it a little bit. And you can see what we have here. In fact, I'll go even further. You can see it's a very rough um, sketch. It hasn't even been cleaned up yet. And we're going to leave it in this state because we're not really concerned with having a highly polished, finished piece of art. What um, what we want here is just to show something very um, spontaneous um, and uh, well designed. Anyway, so here we have our black and white uh, pencil sketch and the first thing I'm going to do is convert it to a um, more brownish color. The end effect, what we're trying to achieve here is to have um, sort of like a sanguine uh, chalk drawing on charcoal paper, the kind of thing that you might have done in um, f um, figure drawing when you were a student uh, or when you were an earlier student. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is duplicate the background layer and I always duplicate the background layer because I, I, I like to have the original art um, still uh, within the files in case I ever need to go back to it. Um, usually uh, you don't, but in the, um, I, just for safety's sake I like to have it. Anyway, um, so we have the background copy uh, here in our uh, layers uh, palette. So I'm going to go into image and I'm going to go to adjust and the first thing I'm going to do is go into color balance. All right, so we have a dialog box here, and it has um, three sliders going from um, cyan to red, magenta to green, yellow to blue, and we also have down here in the bottom um, something, um, some boxes to say uh, shadows, um, midtones, and highlights. Uh, midtones are the default um, that Photoshop has for this. Um, and we have the preserve luminosity uh, box checked. So we're going to leave that checked. And, and what we're going to do is we're also going to ignore highlights because uh, you're going to see in a few minutes that what tends to happen is when we start playing with these sliders, it's going to change the color of the uh, gray lines. So um, I don't want to change the color of the white, the higher, the highlights. So what I really just want to be concerned about is the, the, the gray. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to stay in midtones and we're just going to slide um, the top slider over towards the reds. I have it all the way over. Um, but really this is a matter of personal preference. Then I went down uh, to the yellow, gave it a little bit of yellow. I'm just going to give it a tint, tiny bit of green. Now I'm going to go into the shadows option and we're going to do the same thing. I'm not going to go all the way over with the red because I don't want it to be too red. So we'll go about a little beyond the midway point, a little bit more in the yellow, uh, some green, maybe just a teeny bit more red. And I'm going to click OK. And you could see in a very uh, uh, short period of time we've managed to convert 
our pencil drawing into what looks like a reasonable facsimile of a uh, red sanguine um, chalk. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a, a blank layer. So I have my empty layer here and what I'm trying to do now is I'm going to try and create uh, something that's going to resemble charcoal paper. I'm going to just shut this layer off for now. Uh, so I'm going to go into the um, color picker and I'm going to try to come up with a beige color, something that mimics um, what we've seen in charcoal paper. So I don't want to go too dark, I don't want to go too light. Um, it could always be changed later on, but um, for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to select this beige color here, and I'm going to go over to the paint bucket tool, and we're just going to fill this layer completely with that color. The next thing we're going to do is go into filter. We're going to go into filter noise, and we're going to go into add noise. Now, um, I've already got it in the um, um, adjustment box here. I have my amount set to 9.51. Uh, anything um, below a um, around 9 or 10 percent is uh, good for the purposes that we have here. All we really want to do is break up that solid color. So uh, you'll notice also in the distribution box I have uh, Gaussian check, not uniform, and I've also got the monochromatic um, option selected. Now, um, this document, this original document, is 300 dpi. It's approximately uh, eight and a half by 11. So these numbers here are just about right for the document that we're working on. So I'm going to click OK. And now we have our noise set, but it's it's still for for um, the purposes of this. I feel it's a little bit too uh, computerized, computer uh, too sharp. So one final thing we're going to do in preparation for this paper, <coughs> excuse me, is to go into the filter and blur. And the next thing we're going to do is go into the Gaussian blur. <coughs> We're going to change our radius to approximately uh, 0 0.9, 0 0.81. Any of that is just about right for what we're planning to do. Uh, you can see over here that what it did was it blurred that noise a bit. I'm going to click OK. <coughs> so now what we have here is a reasonable facsimile of charcoal paper. So I'm going to go back to the layer that's on top. I'm going to um, uh, turn that layer back on. And we're going to go into the blending mode, and we're going to go into multiply. Uh, I was in the wrong box. So let me go back, shut that off, go back to normal. And um, now we're in the proper layer. And I'm going to select multiply. And here we go. We have our drawing, our um, red chalk drawing, on charcoal paper. So that's um, a pretty big difference right there from the original pencil sketch from the sketchbook. Uh, but we want to just take it a little bit further than um, what you see here in front of us. So the next thing we're going to do is start picking out some of the highlights. Like I said, this isn't going to be a highly refined uh, drawing. What it's going to be is just um, something that you can show the clients to give them an idea of the direction that the characters that um, you've designed, uh, what they're going to look like. So uh, the next thing we're going to do, we'll go back into the color picker. I don't want to go with a purely white chalk. Um, I think that um, it, it's a little harsh we'll get something really close to white, but something that's a little bit warmer. So I think this is a good color, what we selected right now. And the next option we're going to go is we're going to uh, select brush. So the brush tool is now selected, and we're going to uh, select a brush. Now, the thing about Photoshop, it comes with many uh, different brush choices. And uh, what I'm going to select um, now is a brush that resembles chalk. You can see when I put the cursor over the, that number 36, it says chalk. And we're going to select um, that brush. And um, 
as I was saying before, this is, this comes with Photoshop uh, default brushes, so it's nothing that you have to create, nothing you have to buy. Uh, it already comes with it. You'll also see that it's set at 36 pixels. Uh, that's a bit small for um, what we're working on now, so I'm going to just uh, increase the size of uh, the brush. And um, all right, so we'll go with the diameter of about um, I don't know. We have about seventy-six. Okay, so this is uh, good. The next thing we're going to do is. Um, we're going to just enlarge this uh, drawing for now, makes it much easier to work from. And um, I'm going to go back to the brush and we're going to just start. Oh, the, before we go any further than this, uh, I want to make sure that our opacity level is set uh, much lower. In order to mimic the feel and look of chalk, um, I want to do a slow build up of the white highlights. So I've got the chalk now set to about 30. The flow I'm going to leave where it is. And the next step is I'm going to create a blank layer. So we have another layer here and um, I'm going to uh, change the blending mode to overlay. And what you're going to see in this tutorial is when we're um, creating layers that have a lighter color and we want to create the effect of, of, of a lighter color you want to keep your blending mode to overlay and when you want to um, use darker or more intense colors you would put your um, blending mode to multiply so as I was saying we have the overlay selected we have our brush it's at 30 percent opacity so now I'm just going to start picking out some areas on the drawing that I want to pop a bit. Um, you could see, I'm not trying to color in this drawing uh, like you would a coloring book. Uh, I'm just trying to <coughs> very roughly lay in some highlights to, so that um, the drawing itself begins to uh, take on a more three-dimensional um, look to it. And you can see as I go over and over um, with the chalk, it becomes more and more intense, the white. Uh, like I said, I'm not concerned with staying in the lines. What I'm concerned with is just uh, building form. And uh, right now, like I said, it's the... Um, I'm just trying to pop some of the areas that are closer to the eye and we're going to create another layer after this that will be um, that will concern itself more with light so I'm just going to continue you can see I'm moving pretty fast Even if I'm coming outside my lines, you could see over here that happened. Um, it doesn't matter. Like I said, this is meant to um, feel spontaneous. So if something pops out a little bit from the lines, um, we're not going to worry about it too much. If it was something that um, that was glaringly uh, wrong with it, all we would need to do is go into the eraser and just erase some of that color back. But like I said, this is not, um, not something that I'm too worried about with a drawing like this. So um, as you can see, this is the first layer and um, I began to pop uh, some white. I'm going to create another layer now. And it's basically uh, another layer um, empty layer and I'm going to go once again to overlay and I'm not going to change the color of the chalk what I'm doing is I'm building up another um, highlight layer this time I'm more concerned with um, uh, light and where the light is hitting our subject and so 
what I'm going to do is, I figure it's going to be here towards the front and uh, in this uh, right hand side. And uh, like I said, it's not going to be scientific. I'm just, um, I just trying to lead the viewer's eyes um, to the parts of the drawing that I feel are important um, for the viewer. So you can see here that I've begun to build up some areas much, much more intense with the highlights. As I was saying before, the beauty of uh, Photoshop is its ability to um, create many, many layers, and that really gives you a lot of control over um, your image and um, also gives you control over whether if you make mistakes um, it's so easy to just go back and um, change the mistakes you have you've created so um, you could see I went a little bit above overboard there with the white I didn't want it quite so much there on the line so just like I said roughly trying to pick out the areas of the drawing that um, I believe the highlights would hit. I'm going to just see um, what the drawing is beginning to look like. You can see it's um, uh, already looking pretty uh, good. The dimensions are it's looking very three-dimensional. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is, I just want to put a little bit more information. Like I said, this is not going to be um, a finished illustration. It's um, just meant to show some information to the client. So another thing that's important uh, for this character would be uh, the color of his hair. So um, in keeping with uh, the original ideas behind this character, the, he has red hair. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another uh, blank layer and I'm going to go back to uh, overlay. So that layer is overlay. And I'm going to select um, reasonable uh, red for uh, the character's hair. And once again, selecting the, using the same chalk, the same brush, I'm going to just quickly pop a little color into the character's hair. As I was saying before, um, we don't want to saturate this drawing with a lot of color. What we're just trying to do is um, put some visual information so that the client has an idea of where you're going with your character. So, I believe that's enough. Um, color so that the client gets an idea that this boy has red hair and um, I'm going to put another piece of information in on this drawing and um, what I want to do is I, I he, he's looking very white and I don't want him to look quite so uh, dead and um, I don't want to start over coloring this drawing so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another layer, and once again, I'm going to go into the um, overlay for its blending mode, and I'm just going to put a little blush in on the flesh. So I'm going to um, select a blush color. Once again, I'm going to stay with the same brush. I'm going to stay with the um, um, the same opacity of approximately 30, and I'm just going to start putting a little bit of color into the subject's cheeks, maybe a little on his nose, a little on the lips. Basically the areas on the figure that would um, warm him up a little bit. Like I said, I don't want to go full on color. Just a little bit on the uh, hands, especially around the fingertips 
Normally those are areas where you would see a little bit of this color and I think that's enough for for the flesh. Like I said, it's just to give it a little bit of life. Um, one more uh, piece of information that I would like to include on this before we can we finish this drawing is uh, I'm, I want to work a little bit more on his eyes. Um, usually that's the focus on uh, character drawing is the character's eyes and I want the viewer to um, to focus there just a little bit. Not I, I don't want to go overboard with it. So I'm going to create another layer and um, once more in this layer what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm just going to select a white and what I want to do is I'm going to go with the overlay blending mode what I want to do is um, make his eyes pop a little bit more and um, this brush is way too large now we're working in much smaller detail so I'm going to go with approximately 17 pixels and you can see what I'm doing is I'm going into the whites of his eyes and I'm not making them um, pure white because that wouldn't be um, right for uh, any character actually because the eyes fall into shadow but I did want to um, to draw a little bit of attention to it so I'm adding some white and the next thing I'm going to do is add some color to the eye itself now I've selected a green and I'm not going to put this on another layer because there's so much, uh, so little information on this layer. I'm just going to stay in here and I'm going to um, put that green into the subject's eyes. Okay. And I believe we're pretty much uh, finished with our character. And um, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial um, and I uh, hope to create another one soon. Thanks.